Welcome to the first lecture of scanning probe microscopy. Uh, there are two types of uh, machines in this field. One is called the atomic force microscope and the uh, other one is called the scanning tunneling microscope. The scanning tunneling microscope is the first one that were invented and it consists of a small metallic needle that maps off the surface by scanning across it and applying a small electric bias between the tip and the, and the surface. And then the electric current will tunnel through the gap between the tip and the surface. And the key feature here is that this tunneling current is very sensitive on the distance between the tip and the surface. So by measuring this current, you will have a very accurate way to, to keep the distance at a fixed level when you scan. And that means that the, the tip that scans across the surface will take the same trajectory as the topography of the surface. And that in turn means that you sort of map off the surface and, and can resolve its features. So what you need to have here is that you need to have some kind of feedback loop that measures this electric tunneling current and then controls the tip and makes so that the distance between the tip and, and the surface is kept at a constant rate and while you do the scanning. And to control this tip you need to have some very fine uh, mechanical motion capabilities. And if you use screws and other coarse mechanic stuff, then, then that will not be enough. So what you, what you need to do to have this fine control of the system is to have a piezoelectric material. A piezoelectric material, that is, a, uh, we can say it's a small crystal that changes its physical shape due to electric potential. So that means that you can have a very fine control of motion. These piezoelectric materials you can find, for example, in these uh, gift cards that um, play music when you open them, and so all these small speakers, that's piezoelectric materials. Uh, uh, and the speakers there make this sound due to the sh it changes the, the vibration of a membrane due to this electric signal behavior of the material. Uh, and you create a device with uh, this piezoelectric material that can move the tip in three dimensional. So it can scan across the surface in, in, in x, y direction and, and also change the, the distance between the surface and the tip. So, so that, that is the second thing that you need to have. So first you measure the tunneling current with a very high amplifier. And then you have this uh, piezoelectric motion capabilities of the tip. So you have this fine uh, control of motion. And uh, the next thing is you have this uh, feedback control that regulates this. So you can program the machine to keep the constant, uh, uh, to keep the distance to the surface at a constant level. And why you need to do that is because uh, you have a thermal vibration and noise vibrations in the environment and the sample will actually move up and down like this, like a boat on, on the sea. And if you have the tip above, the, it, you will have this uh, kind of noise and very hard to keep, keep a steady state. It will always be in motion. So what you need to do is to, fo to follow along. So the surface and tip goes up and down together in the noise like this. So, and that you can, can't do manual, so you need to have a computer control to, to have this feedback, to control this feedback. And if you have all these three devices, then you have built a scanning tunneling microscope. And uh, one can discuss that, the, how, how can you, what kind of resolutions do you get with this system? And, and that is that you have subatomic resolution. You, you have very, very fine, uh, resolution in the images and the first atomic images that uh, were created was taken with these instruments. Then you might say that uh, how can you get atomic resolution when you have uh, this uh, small needle shaped tip? I mean in from an atomic viewpoint even a, a small needle will be huge like a mountain. And, and that is true but uh, uh, it works quite amazingly because uh, in the outer parts of the tip, there will be at least a few atoms that is 
more close to the surface than the other ones. And because the tunneling current is very sensitive to these distance changes, all the current will flow into this outermost single atom of the tip. So that, in, from that viewpoint, the tip will look like to be atomic sharp. And that makes everything work. Of course, if you, the tip can be bad and so on, but I will discuss these artifacts in the image later. But, uh, but the general idea is that it's very simple actually to create atomic resolution with a device like this. You can build this microscope by yourself, basically. Okay, let me demonstrate this scanning. Here I have a metallic ruler, and we can pretend that this is the tip that will scan the surface. So this is the metallic needle that will be in contact. And this can be the surface. And we can have some obstacles. Like so. And here we can see that, say that this is the cross-section view of the surface. So this is the topography with some, a surface with some features on top of it. And this is the scanning tip. In the scanning tunneling microscope, what we do then is that the tip will approach like this, and then it comes into the range where we get this tunneling current. And when the current level is, is at a pre-given value, then it, the probe will stay at that position. Uh, and then we start the scanning, and the probe approaches the first object here. Then it starts to sense its uh, tunneling current from this side, and then the current will increase, and that will mean that the control loop that controls the distance between the tip and the sample will change, will, will change its position, so it will withdraw them to decrease the current. Then after a while the current will go down too much, and then it will compensate and go back forward again. So th and that means when we scan over here, it will follow the contour of this obstacle, keeping the, the current level constant, like this. Uh, and this is called the constant current mode scanning. Like so. And what we can, can see here is, uh, is that yeah, of, of course, we, we keep distances here co constant by having this constant current. And, and the noise creates that everything will move up and down like this, but we don't take the noise into account here. And well, one thing that we can see is that when we come down to a small ho hole like this in the sample, the, the size of the, sh of the tip will prevent it from reaching all the way down. So when it comes here, it will start to measuring the, the tunneling current from this side of this, this obstacle. And that means that the tip will only go down like this and then start to go back upwards again and falls. And the same thing we will see in this region. Here it can't penetrate down into the hole. So that means that the, the resolution you get if you have a big obstacles in the sample is sort of depending on the, on the shape of the tip. Uh, and that, that, that's why you can have, for example, very advanced tips with, uh, with small uh, nanotube objects in the bottom here and so on. That makes them penetrate more easily into small, small cavities. But this is the general idea with the scanning tunneling microscope. And I said this was const, constant current mode. There is also a second method that you can use when you scan, and that is called constant height mode. And in constant height mode, what you do then is you keep the probe at the same distance like this, and you just scan straight across without having any feedback on it. And just measuring the change in the tunneling current. We know that I said that the tunneling current increases when the distances between tip and, and, and sample is decreased, then the current will increase. So here we have high current, low current, medium current, high current, and low current. Uh, and this technique is, is uh, nice because uh, it's very fast. You can scan very fast like this because you don't need it to compensate with the motion of the, of the probe. Uh, and that means that uh, it, it sometimes can be beneficial if uh, you need to scan for at high speed. Uh, then uh, this technique can be most useful. Uh, the drawback with this is that the, the tunneling current sort of goes to zero just within a, a few nanometers distances. So, 
If the surface have any bigger obstacles that's uh, higher than a few nanometers, then the current will go go too much to to high and to to zero almost instantly, and then this technique will not work. So you need so almost atomic flat surfaces in order to use constant type mode. So that's the two techniques: constant type mode and constant current mode. Uh, I think uh, this is the end of this lecture. Now I, I talked about uh, how you operate this machine and uh, the theory and behind it uh, that you had this scanning probe. Now I want you to do some of the problems that I've given out below here and then uh, you can continue on the second lecture where I talk about uh, atomic force microscopy.